you go to other countries, like when I went to the Netherlands, you know, everybody was like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, what do you mean? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I thought that you were going to have like your pants sagging and this, that, and the other. We didn't create that construct. That is not something that's of us. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. But that message is out there. And so if you look at who really runs the shows, Mona Scott Young has no power. She's Lady Eloise. Mm. Okay. They hired wow. Mona Scott Young to be the black face because there's a couple of Jewish guys. You can Google this because what was happening was Jim Jones was trying to push a show, you know, with him and Chrissy. Right. You know, um, Mona Scott Young, for people who don't know, she ran a, a label called Violator Management, managed Missy Elliott, Buster Around, so on and so forth. Right. right. When it was time to get this thing done, there were a couple of Jewish guys who were producing this and they hired Mona <laughs> Scott Young to be the fall guy. I mean, the black face to be the executive producer. I'm sorry. I misspoke. So. <laughs> Why you, while you're blaming Mona Scott Young, you don't see the man behind the curtain. Watch The Wizard of Oz again with new eyes. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Let me show you this big, larger-than-life figure who is responsible for all of that. Exactly. So that I can get an audience with The Wizard. Exactly. Exactly. You know? So exactly. we, we got we to we gotta, yeah, we gotta be more, we gotta be more conscious of what we're, what we're feeding people because that... Um, that narrative is dangerous. There's a show on MTV, I think, um, maybe a couple of years ago, where there are parts of North Carolina where there are no black people. Mm. And they saw some black people and they were shocked that they were not like what they saw on TV. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So that image is important. And that image affects what, what winds up happening. Right. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, man, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's funny that you say that. I got in the discussion... Uh, yesterday about Mona Scott Young and mm -hmm. uh you know I, I think that a lot of times what we do is we kind of look at the token a lot of black people look at the token negro as mm -hmm. inspiration this is something that I can do they th such and such did this that and the third I can do that and right. although that you know black we I love black success in whatever yes. form it comes in but I think that too all too often we look at the token negro and not the self-made black man like mm -hmm. yourself, you know, and even though you had a, you know, had a history in radio and, you know, working mm -hmm. with people, um, you know, not, not a lot of people are going to tell the story of Dave Anderson, who, you know, who has all of these books and these courses and, and different things like that. Uh, they're always, you know, it's always looked at as what you did work for working for somebody else. That's the inspiration and the motivation right. instead of the, the independent entrepreneur. So. Uh, so tell me about that, like, you know, it's switching mm -hmm. lanes and, you know, going right. from sales uh, positions and sales jobs to, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, just surviving off of your brand, the Dave Anderson brand. Um, I'm going to tell you it's feast or famine. This mm -hmm. is me being 100 percent transparent because I don't I don't like this narrative and this is not to um, disrespect anybody, but I have to speak my truth. OK, there are, quote unquote, gurus and we all know who they are. Mm. And these gurus will tell you, oh, just focus on one thing. These gurus will tell you, oh, just, you know, 10x your life and, and document everything. Don't <laughs> plan anything. I only do one thing. And I'm like, you're lying. Yeah. And then what you're not telling people is I, my father. OK, my father had full Alzheimer's and dementia by the time I was 17. Before I got to campus at Temple University, my father had to go into a home. Mm into hospice my father the strongest man i ever knew wow so i'm losing my father at a very critical time you know and i'm not trying to make anybody you know feel bad for me because i had father figures i had a stepfather i had uh, a grandfather my stepfather and my grandfather died within a month of each other wow wow you see what i'm saying so all the positive strong male influences that i had were dying off like the dinosaurs. So I didn't have a daddy to give me a thousand dollars to blow on baseball cards at the mall. Right. <laughs> right. That's the part that gets left out of the conversation. Exactly. I exactly. didn't have I didn't have a daddy to give me a leg up in real estate, which gets left out of the 10x conversation. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Wow. I didn't have um, two or three generations of insurance you know, policies to build my brand off of. I didn't get 
My parents didn't get government subsidies when I got into the country to buy a liquor store. My father bought a corner store on a cop salary, and he pulled his money from his accountant brothers and my uncle, who happened to be in radio, which nobody knew, which is why I never used the name Anderson, mm. because Kearney Anderson ran WBLX in New York. WBLS in New York. He ran uh, WMBX in Chicago. Okay. You know, I never used his name because I wanted to make it on my own. Never got a hand out, never got a hand up. So when people talk about being self-made, a lot of people that you believe are self-made had a hell of a lot of help. Wow, that's right, that's right. And if I could, and this is not, and I'm being real because I am not a multimillionaire. I do well. I'm not going to lie. I do well, but I'm not a multimillionaire. If I could afford to pay somebody $100,000 a year to follow me around, you know what this grind really is. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, and so for me... I take issue with the fact that if Damon if Damon Dash gets on the Breakfast Club and tells DJ Envy, listen, um, you need to understand that you cannot pass your job down to your son. If your son does not have your skill set, if he can't DJ so on and so forth, it, it's a wrap. You can't give him anything. Right. I'm talking about legacy. And everybody, every Negro out came out the woodwork <laughs> on the internet. Oh, Dame Dash is crazy. That's why Jay-Z left him. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And Dame Dash is trying to show you, listen, I had a partnership with Def Jam. There's a difference between a partnership and being under somebody's thumb. That was a 50-50 partnership. Right. He, and he's trying to break that down. And everybody's saying he's crazy and this, that, and the third. He fell out with Jay on some personal stuff, you know, that, exactly. that, that rolled rolled over into business. Not some business that rolled over into personal stuff. There is a difference and a distinction, exactly. which is why ain't nobody been killed behind it. Right. <laughs> so let's right. start stating some facts. I'm going somewhere with this, so bear with me. When Gary going. Vaynerchuk, when Gary Vaynerchuk says, oh, you know, you have to go in. You have to, you know, you have to tell your mom, you know, it's okay. You know, oh, it's like somebody just showed fire to cavemen. Folks are running up and down. Right. You know, and I'm like, Fact. if I say that, people tell me I'm crazy. Fact. People tell me I'm too rough. People tell me I'm, I'm I'm a bully. That's where the business bully name came from. If you want me to do that, like Reggie Noble said in, in 1996, I'll be that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm at a point now. Where and this is no diss to Vaynerchuk, but I have to speak my truth, bro. You fraud. Mm. And when I say he's fraud, what he does is very real. What he does, as far as making money and, and and day trading information, that's very real and more power to you. But I have an issue with somebody who, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, only speaks to black people in hip hop and sports references. Wow. Wow. Go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. When he speaks in Berlin, he speaks like a normal human being who speaks English, who's intelligent and intelligible. Mm -hmm. When he speaks to black people, it's always say, if you want to be the next Jeezy, get on Twitter and start talking about Jeezy conversations. Look at the hashtags and start talking about Jeezy, because God forbid, all we want to do is either be LeBron, Jeezy or Beyonce. Wow. Speak on it. Go look. I'm not making this up. I am not trying to disrespect this man. More power to him. I like a lot of what he says. I don't like how he talks to people who look like me. Mm, because pe people who look like me are more than that. I I made the basketball team, you know, when I was in middle school, but I sucked. <laughs> right. Because right. I'm not an athlete. My brother won two basketball championships, but my brother's a police officer in Philadelphia. Mm. My brother has two degrees. He is not a moron. And I'm not saying because I'm not big on degrees either. But my point is, Vaynerchuk, you can't go around condescending to people. You can't belittle black people and put us all in this box. Because the, the truth of the matter is, when I was playing seven instruments, hip hop wasn't my main uh, uh, form of music that I was listening to. It wasn't my favorite genre. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? So we have to be very... Most people don't understand that they've been conditioned since birth, and especially black people. Here's what I mean. Watch me. And then we can move on to your next question. When children are born, okay, parents still have to work. There is no, like it is in Europe, where you can take a year or two off and bond with your child. No universal health coverage, none of that fly stuff. Right. So what winds up happening? You got to go with auntie or grandma or somebody else who's not working, who is or who's at home, or you go to daycare. And when are you in daycare? Oh, arguably eight hours. Mm. So you're at daycare for eight hours. So that's automatically in you, whether you realize it or not. Right. Then you go into preschool where you're there for eight hours. 
whether you realize it or not. Then you go into kindergarten, and sometimes you have half a day for kindergarten, either the, the beginning half or the lower half, depending, but you're still someplace else for the other four hours. Right. So then when you get into first grade all the way to or through 12th grade, what happens? You're working Monday through Friday, and you're so happy for Friday because on Friday, statistically, there's no homework. You're right, right. And we can get into the semantics as to why homework is or is not important later, but there's no homework. So now you've been conditioned your entire life to work Monday through Friday for 40 hours a week and live for those two days. Exactly. Exactly. And then you wonder why when you get to college, there's no courses on entrepreneurship and the courses that do exist on entrepreneurship are a joke. They don't teach you how to balance a checkbook. They don't teach you about business credit. They don't teach you about Dun and Bradstreet. They don't teach you the things that you need to know in order to make a business actually function. Because the name of the game when it comes to these farms and plantations that we call education right. is to create the ladder and climb the ladder upon which um, – corporate uh, looking for you to go up. In other words, instead of creating the building upon which the corporate ladder leans, they want to teach you how to climb the corporate ladder. They want to teach you how to be a great worker. They don't want to teach you how to be a great thinker. Let me ask you a question. Pop quiz. How many stars are in Ryan's belt? I have no idea. Congratulations. You are not smarter than a fifth grader. That's why people in MIT and Harvard and Yale and Stanford and Howard and Temple can't Get past on that game show because the majority of stuff that you're fed as a child does not help you in real life. Exactly. I have not used algebra. I've made millions of dollars for companies and I ain't once had to use H plus three equals eight. <laughs> right, right, right. I am not an engineer. I am not an architect. I don't need Pythagoras' theorem either. Right. Exactly. So, you know, we have all of these things happening, but no one's talking about the conditioning. And you know who gets to rise above those conditions? Who? White people. Mm, speak because on. white people get to bootstrap. White people get to tell the story. And like the old African proverb says, until such time as the lion learns to write, the hunter will always be the hero of the story. Right. Exactly. exactly. So you can talk about how your dad was OK with you blowing a thousand dollars after you just got finished saying how hard it was for him as an immigrant. Mm, right. Something ain't job in chief. Right, exactly, exactly. Because you can just go to the mall by yourself, rent a booth, and and spend a thousand dollars on 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 uh, baseball cards and rock out. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, no. Granted, when it comes to wine, I think he's probably the best sommelier uh, 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 available to me. Love him right. for that. But you know, when it comes to um, dealing with people honestly, I, I have some issues and I and I have some questions. Yeah, and I mean, you you're talking. To a, a lot of us, especially like in the you know, black entrepreneurs who, you know, have podcasts and different platforms and different things like that, you know, we listen to them. And after a while, it's kind of like, yo, you know, we start to see uh, the smoke and mirrors, so to speak. So, you know, you speaking the truth, man. Those are facts. Definitely facts, man. And uh, it's funny that you brought up bootstrapping. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Dame talked about that, you know what I'm saying? Bootstrapping and how, how to be an entrepreneur from nothing. And see that, like you said, that never gets talked about. They see a lot of people this is just not black people but uh, people a lot of people 85 percent of people have this struggle where they don't have enough capital to start their own business they have to bootstrap they have to to uh, make a dollar out of 15 cents talk about and you you transition from sales positions and sales jobs after you got out of radio into building your own brand mm -hmm. tell me how what was the process you know you know what i mean coming from from uh, you know, as a salesperson to an entrepreneur and what you had to do to bootstrap, flip and re-up and, and rinse and repeat and all that good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about this honestly. This is the one thing you will hear me and Gary Vaynerchuk agree on. The internet has leveled the playing field. And this is a conversation that Charlemagne and I had 10 years ago. It Like when you're in radio, if you were in a small market like Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is market 126, there's approximately 256 markets that are uh, graded, meaning they have ratings. Anything below Tupelo, Mississippi, you can cancel Christmas. It's not getting rated. So it really don't count. Mm, okay. See what I'm saying? So Fayetteville, North Carolina, market 126, ain't nothing popping. Now you go to Charlotte, which is, I think, market 46. Okay. Different ball game, And so what winds up happening is if I got a Kanye West – in my studio in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And please understand that a lot of rappers, a lot of big rappers will do small shows because that's how they make their money. Promoters, drug dealers like to launder their money. Let's just keep it funky. I'm not saying that every promoter is a drug dealer, but 
smart drug dealers are promoters. (laughs) So, you know, they'll come through, they'll do the radio, um, they'll do the radio interview. And if I'm asking a question about Kanye's relationship with Alexis and why all of a sudden, you know, he's all up Kim Kardashian's behind and I have that videotape and I send it to a TMZ, then boom, I'm as big as Rosenberg in New York. Mm. So, Here's what I'm saying, and this is what most entrepreneurs miss, and this is why it's very important to understand who I am in this context. Um, Before I made the transition, because I went from radio personality, you know, from the age of 9 to 21, to producer. You know, my first producing gig um, happened at Radio 1. They they replaced that morning show with Russ Parr. I went across the street. Wendy came down from New York because Puff basically blackballed her. So she came down from New York, and I wound up at 21 being her producer. Okay. She lovingly fired me the same way Roberta Fleck fired Luther Vandross and said, you're going to be all right, but you ain't going to make it here. You got to go. You got too much ambition. And wow. that wasn't no shade. It was the greatest favor I'd ever had done to me. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So you fast forward a few years, and I'm producing DJ Clue. You know, my boss at the time um, got Clue out of 97 and over to power. Okay. You know, so we, we, we did that show. I was going to do a show with um, Pimp C, but Pimp C died the day before we were going to start taping. Rest up, Pimp. Yo, man. Pimp was amazing. I was close to the bun, but Chad was funny as hell, man. He was, we ain't playing no motherfucking Beyonce. I'll tell you that right now. This is going to be underground, right? underground, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, right. and, and that's what I hold on to. But I said all that to say that I was a producer. And what I understood as a producer was if I'm going to make sure that my talent gets ratings, I have to give them the, I have to get their information and their content out to people. Right. So when you look at a company like iHeart, which was Clear Channel when I got there, I became the first director of social media. They had social media managers. They had social networking managers. I was the first director of social media, black or white. Now everybody over there is a director of social media. Right. right. So you know how that go. Anyway, anyhow, I had built up enough um, equity because there was um, if you go back to 09. And I'm trying to give you the process as quickly as I can. If you go back to 09, the BET Awards, right after Michael Jackson died, Jamie Foxx hosted it, and it was a hot, nappy mess. Yeah. Note this to Jamie. I love it. Right. Uh, right. But I I, I wrote a a Facebook blog called The Top 10 Reasons the BET Awards Made Me Want to Vomit. The next morning, I wake up with 5,000 friend requests and an article in the the LA Times. Wow. That is what taking control of an opportunity does. We don't see the holes. I'm like Emmett Smith, and I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I'm like Emmett Smith. I can see the hole, I'm going to run through it. But I got to find the hole first. And once I find the hole, I'm gone. So that taught me that it's not about what you say, it's where you say it and how how you distribute it. Right. And the internet changes that. So I took that knowledge, and then I revamped, you know, Clear Channel, which is now iHeart's way of doing everything. And so... I did all of that and then I left because there were certain things that I was saying to do that folks were acting like was not good ideas. And when I left automatically, those ideas just became reality. Mm. Right. You know, and I'm not going to say what they are, but I will say that the company is no longer called Clear Channel. It's iHeart Everything, just like McDonald's has a Big Mac and McFlurries and McNuggets. Right. Exactly. Because if you think Clear Channel, you think billboards. You don't think radio. Exactly. But when you think iHeart, you do. Exactly. exactly. You know, so and I'm not going to get into some of the things they do with black people. You know, God bless them. I appreciate opportunities, but it is what it is. So I had to I had to create a lane. And what I realized was there was a gap, you know, because I'm not the black people's sales coach. I'm a sales coach who happens to be black, who loves his people. Exactly. I am not a, a black derivative. You know, so my whole thing was use the Internet first. Understand how to sell second. Understand how people behave third and then find their need and fucking fill it. Mm. That's it. It is a four step process. I call pitch, close, upsell, repeat. That's why I wrote the book. Right. You know, when I was selling uh, when I was selling home security, I noticed that, you know, I went to Temple University, which is in North Philadelphia. Um, It is a hood. (laughs) You know, the school is not hood. It's an oasis in the middle of the hood. And they have gentrified a lot of the hood. But my point was, I saw all of these developers, you know, buying up property for cheap, exactly. either at share sale or, or short sale or whatever the case may be. And I'm selling home security systems. 
Exactly. I'm going to the hood. And so there's always, in every black neighborhood I've ever been in, there's always a woman either sitting in her windowsill, sit, sitting um, in her door, or sitting on a porch watching the world go by. Yep. That is the smartest person you will ever meet. And so I went up to the neighborhood mother and I said to her, ma'am, excuse me, can you tell me who's buying up all these properties? Oh, yeah, baby, that's that little white boy around the corner. I said, thank you so much, ma'am. I'm going to be back and see you in an hour. Mm -hmm. I went around the corner. I said, who's in charge here? Guy says, I am in charge here. I said, what's your name? My name is German. I said, okay, German. Look, how many many properties do you have? Oh, this is a 50-unit thing. Okay, cool. I'll tell you what. I'll give you all these units. At half off the cost, let's sign this deal now. We signed the deal. I made $2,800 in about 30 minutes. I came back. I gave that woman a $100 tip and put her in a free system that I paid for for a year. Mm. See, what everybody tries to go out here and do is say, hi, my name is Johnny. I have this wonderful product. Exactly. exactly. You're not going to get there one-to-one, hand-to-hand. That's bullshit. Shaking hands and kissing babies is great for politics because it's great for optics, but that's not how elections are won. Exactly. Elections are won by states. Exactly. So you have to have a sweeping approach. Right, right. And, you know, when people saw me do that, they're like, oh, damn. Mm. Anderson's doing it this way. Oh, well, you know, we we can't let him do that anymore. So then the rules change. Yeah. yeah. See what I'm saying? Right. And right. so I, I realized that whether I was selling gutters or home security systems or um, anything else, the process in and of itself remains the same. Right. And so I took my knowledge and I started to write a book called Common Sense Ain't Common, you know, and that book um, was just to give people an understanding of what um, what it could be. You know, and and that's why Charlemagne has uncommon sense. Mm. See what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, So you have that. And then when I wrote Pitch, Close, Upsell, Repeat, I put six years into selling and and, and, and mastering what it is to sell my way. Not some, you know, Grant Cardone method that costs $10,000 or not some Gary Vaynerchuk vague, you know, document. Don't, 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 uh, don't create crappity do um you know just real brass text i wrote 74 pages why is it 74 pages because we ain't got time to read a whole bunch if we making money exactly i'm not i'm not i'm not fluffing you exactly you know so that that's what i that's what i did and i continue to do that so when people join my you know when they join my sales course you know at bit.ly forward slash the number two join the bully you know they they get results i got people making four or five figures a month why because I'm cutting through the BS. Right. You know, and then, you know, when it comes to one-on-one coaching and things of that nature, you know, then, you know, that's when that's when the costs start to occur. But at, at the end of the day, you know, I have to value me. We give away more than we, than we actually need to in order to survive. That's why Koreans now uh, run nail salons. You know, that's why different types of Asians uh, run the hair care industry. Because we gave so much away. That we didn't sell anything. The right. game is to be sold, not to, to be told. told. Yep. Yep. Last I checked, that was pimping one on one. Yeah. But black people started slipping on their pimping, yeah. and it cost us. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You ain't lying there. You are not lying there, man. And uh, man, speaking of that, man, and, and I know you got to go. I know you got uh things to do. Got to. Uh, are you good? Yeah. You yeah. Good? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you're coming from the radio world, uh, right? And you know, podcasting is 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 uh, is big now. You know, especially for you know in the talk radio realm, and and now you have streaming music services that are kind of because I don't listen to the radio. I'm 32, you know, and you know right. I don't listen to the radio. So you got millennials who are just not listening and tuning into the radio. Where do you see like th- this whole world of of uh, the audio experience going? You know, in radio and podcasting and streaming service. Do you think? Radio is just going to be uh, just a, a foregone memory in a few years. Or where do you think it's headed? I think radio will always be here the same way television will always be here. Do I think it will be as powerful? No. And they'll try to tell you everything under the sun about how radio still reaches more people and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? A hit dog will holler every day. <laughs> right. You right. know, and so what winds up happening is um, they have not adjusted. You know, the Breakfast Club isn't popular because of its radio show. The Breakfast Club is popular because of YouTube. Exactly. Exactly. Let's not get that twisted. Exactly. You know, the radio show was good. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Charlamagne is one of my best friends. I love him to death. He gave me money when I couldn't give myself any. Mm. So I can't take anything away from this man at all. Right. Okay. Um, But the show in and of itself 
you know, is good, but the 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 interviews are what people listen to. Right. Tell me tell me what Envy's mix was playing. You can't. Right, <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. tell me what Angela's rumor report was saying. You can't. You know Donkey of the Day and you and you and you know the interviews. Exactly. So let's 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 understand that we have to we have to look at it for, for what it is. And now everybody's trying to do that. You yeah. know? But when when me and Charlemagne said we were in uh, Minneapolis in two thousand and eight and when we were there we were talking about the importance of the fact that black radio throws away its hits too early and they have nowhere to go because they go from mainstream hip hop to you know on the wings of love you know Teddy Pendergrass and Anita Baker and all these old other fools and all that stuff is in the middle like yo we're about to be 34 we're about to be 35 to 54 and when that happens all the stuff we grew up with Guy and, and old school hip hop and Sir Mix a lot and Big Daddy Kane and KRS One all that stuff has nowhere to go right exactly and everybody was like oh well that'll never work and then all of a sudden folks start running around here with boom stations and old school hip hop stations and Charlemagne and I have yet to got a check mm. Yeah, yeah. The you're same right. people who were laughing, the same people who were laughing at us in Minneapolis in 2008 are the same people who took it and ran with it. Exactly. Now, that don't mean that me and Charlemagne ain't hurting financially because we ain't, but the principle is the principle. Right. The same people were in that room who laughed at the idea, who then took the idea and ran with it. Exactly. And anybody tells you differently, my whole thing is ask Charlemagne. And go back and watch my interview in The Breakfast Club where I say Charlemagne invented the boom format. Yeah, yeah, you said that. I remember you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm not going to sit up here and say that, you know, we were having a conversation and I'm like, yo, yeah, we're, this is this is the truth. We throw our stuff away. Like, why is it boys to men don't have a home? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So when, you know, Charlemagne sparked that conversation, so I'm not going to say that I invented it, but we did tell people what should have been done. So I'm going to give that man credit and I'm going to boost him up because he's given me his platform. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so, that's what you do with your brother. But, you know, it is what it is. Being as far as black people, you know, like when we go into rooms with other cultures that we need to really just kind of kind of just ear hustle the game. And, uh, you know, our ideas, we may we may tell them our ideas and they might might shoot it down. But then a few weeks later, then they adapt it into a show or into a station. Do you think like yep. hindsight being 2020, do you like. Now going into rooms now, are you just kind of like, is that your your uh, your strategy? You know, you just kind of ear hustle and you know you don't really you kind of close lip about what you what your plans are. Bro, you won't see me coming until it's done. <laughs> right, right. You you won't, and 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 that's not me being funny. That's not me being shady. That's me being honest. Because what happens is, look at it like this, right? When you see, like, there are these commercials, I think it was Dodge or, or, or Chevy, forgive me, I don't remember which one, but they had this commercial with this white man who allegedly invented the cell phone. I'm like, that's not the truth. Mm. So what winds up happening is, if you honestly think Edison failed a thousand times and then all of a sudden he came up with a light bulb, go look up Lewis Latimer. Mm. Right, right, right. If, if, if you want to talk about how Edison was a great inventor, go go look up George Washington Carver. And then let's talk about Edison being a great inventor. Let's talk about the fact that people give Marconi credit for radio when it was Tesla. That's why the electric car is named for Tesla. Mm, right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So what winds up happening is you either have the, the, the money and the resources to make it happen or you give your idea to somebody else because you run your mouth too much. Loose lips. Yeah. Sink ships. <laughs> You know, right, what I mean, right. that's what it is. And, and we have titanic mouths. Right. Yep. You won't see me coming until it's too late for you to do anything about it. And even if you, and this is why I tell people, I'm going to give you an example. Another pop quiz. You and I still have never been in the same room, breathe the same air as far as you and I know, correct? Correct. I'm going to give you a pop quiz. You've been to a supermarket before, correct? Yes, sir. All right, here comes my psychic moment. Describe a cookie that has two chocolate ends and cream in the middle. What would you call that? Uh, Oreo. Wrong. You call it a Hydrox. Hydrox came out first. Oreo had better marketing. Hydrox is dead. Oreo's America's favorite cookie. Mm. Bitch, nice. I'm Oreo. <laughs> I'm coming. You can sit up here and tell people that you came up with, oh, you know, go have a conversation with your mama and, and so on and so forth. You can go tell people that, you know, you, 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 you dominate this, that, and the third. You can go tell people that you build it up by your bootstraps. Bitch, I'm coming for you. Right, right. 
And when I come, it's a wrap. And I'm going to tell you this, and this is what pisses me off, because I have black folks who say, well, why is it that you speak to white audiences? Well, you know what? I speak to white audiences because HBCUs don't want me. Wow. Let's just keep it real. When I go um, and, and, and my team, I have people who book my speaking engagements. When And, and, and maybe it's just been our experience. So I'm saying some HBCUs, HBCUs don't want me. Wow. But I can I can lecture at the University of Pennsylvania, which is an Ivy League school. I can lecture at my alma mater, Temple University. You know, I can go to um, uh, to the University of Tennessee. No mm. problem. Right, right. Fayetteville State, nope. Wow. Tennessee State, nope. Cheney, Lincoln, nope. Drexel will have me, though. Wow. wow. And, and, and I don't know if it's because... If, if it's a budget issue, my team ain't built, you know, ain't, ain't bitching for money. Like, just have a conversation. But when I start talking that real about, listen, a lot of this is a hustle. Right. Understand that, you know, people got people start to get nervous because they value themselves on their education. Just like right after slavery happened, and and, and you look around for Reconstruction in that Jim Crow period, there was a period, um, right, you know, when there were more free people starting to walk around. And if some white person stopped you and said, what are you doing? What did you have to do? You had to show them your papers. Mm -hmm. So when you hear black people talk about how educated they are, they want to tell you about their degrees. Mm -hmm. I've got degrees and what? So, right. Right. you know, I, I still had to pay student loans. Obama had to pay student loans. Michelle had to pay student loans. Who gives a damn about your degree if it if it makes you broke and it doesn't guarantee you a job? Like I said on the Breakfast Club, and people missed it. Three hundred thousand people with MBAs right now put down that they tend bar as their main source of an occupation. Wow, wow, that's crazy. So you want to talk to me about your parchment? Let me talk to you about what parchment means. Because if parchment meant that much, we wouldn't have people getting blasted in the street by cops Mm -hmm. if parchment meant something. Because last I checked, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights was written on parchment. Right. Exactly. All that parchment, don't. I can't take my parchment to the electric company and say, you know what, I can't pay my light bill this month. Right. We got to stop playing these games. Right. We have got to stop, you know, looking like, oh, my goodness, I just, I'm confused and I just... I don't know, and, and and I, but I'm educated and I'm smart, and people like me. No, dog. Yeah. What can you do? Right, exactly. You know, my grandfather lied. He dropped out of school. He lied, and he joined the Navy because he was trying to get away from the clan that was setting to lynch him. Right. And when he came out, you know, he became he went and, he went to tailor school. He shined shoes at night the whole night. And what wound up happening was he met a woman, my grandmother. After eight months, they got married. All of their children, with the exception of one, have master's degrees. Mm. Uncle Jimmy with the MIT and was on the team that invented the jumbotron. Those are facts. He was also playing um, background bongos for Carlos Santana at Woodstock. And I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm saying that to say that his experiences outside of education were greater than the education itself. My Aunt Fran, the one who did not go to college, she had a 40-year career at the state of New Jersey. Wow, wow. She's retired in Florida. So, you know, intelligence does not make education. I know plenty of people who graduated from Yale who are dumb as bricks. And I know plenty of people who graduated from Yale who became president. Yeah. Who people say are dumb as bricks. (laughs) Right, right. 